Welcome to an absolutely gorgeous September morning and welcome to an even more gorgeous Ducati Multistrada Pikes Peak. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I absolutely love these. I've been trying to test ride one of these bikes for probably two years, well, since they were announced, because I thought this could be my perfect motorcycle, a big, comfortable, supermoto style motorcycle that looks absolutely fantastic. And just look at this thing, it looks absolutely amazing. Painted carbon fiber front end, painted carbon fiber mudguard, full Olin's electronic suspension, single side swinging arm, Marchesini wheels. This thing is absolutely incredible. And you just can't swing your leg over one of these. If you want to buy one of these bikes, you have got to buy it blind because there is no test rides on this machine. This is a special order machine only. Now, Ducati UK have had this on their fleet for a couple of months. You know, they wasn't really going to put these on the fleet because they're sold out, the special order. Why have one as a press machine? You know, it's, it's that special. But this was ordered for some event with GQ magazine, which never went ahead. So in the end, they put it on their fleet. So it's only MCN and the 44 Teeth Boys which have managed to swing their leg over this bike so far. So uh, I'm really excited about this. This is potentially my dream motorcycle. So join me for a little test ride around my normal test ride route and I'll let you know what I think about this incredibly special motorcycle. So uh, grab yourself a quick espresso and chop seat, roll the intro. So the main thing with the Pikes Peak is it comes with a 17 inch front wheel. Obviously the normal Multistrada V4S comes with a 19. It's only available in a 19. The old Multistrada always used to be available in a 17, but this new V4 version is only available uh, in a 19 inch front wheel. So the Pikes Peak gets the 17 inch front wheel. These are the full Marchesini, the same wheels which are on the Panigale V4S. So the lightweight forged Marchesini wheels, some sticky, Pirelli Diablo Rosso 5 rubber, you know, so these are full on super bike wheels. The Pikes Peak also comes with the full Olin's electronic suspension. So you've got Olin's electronic suspension front and rear. You've got, like I say, this carbon fiber front end, tinted screen, G Moto GP inspired paint scheme on this one as well. Another big change is for the Pikes Peak, you get the single sided swinging arm, you don't get that. You know, it's a double-sided on, uh, on the normal V4S. So you get a few little differences to the standard V4S. You also get some different mapping modes and stuff like that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And the riding position is slightly altered and a few other things, but uh, I can't wait. I'm really excited. Let's swing my leg over this machine and let's get rolling. I love painted carbon fibre. Is there anything cooler than carbon fibre? which has painted over the top of it. It looks so, so good. And it's the same on the mudguard, you know, matte carbon, red Ducati paint over it. Absolutely sexy. If it rides as good as it looks, we're onto a winner. So jumping aboard, you're greeted with a very familiar view. If you, uh, if you know the Multistrada V4, massively wide tank, massively wide bars, you know, loads of frontage, loads of protection. You've got that lovely uh, MotoGP paint scheme, which I really, really love. And the best thing about this bike, listen, this engine, oh, listen to this. As I'm revving that, you know, as, as most will know, this engine is, this engine is counter-rotating, so it spins in the opposite way to the wheels. And as I rev it, I can actually feel the rear of the bike lifting in the front going down so as it revs it's actually forcing the front wheel on the ground and this is one of the reasons why this bike is so 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 stable it's such a stable machine this it's you know it's locked to the road but anyway let's get going i mean this bike is not massively light you know it's it's, it's a relatively heavy machine this it weighs 239 kilos fully fueled bear in mind this has got the 22 litre fuel tank so this doesn't have the rally tank this is the this is the 22 litre standard v4s size tank 
but you know it's 239 kilos it's only one kilo lighter than the standard v4s despite having the carbon fiber the marchesini wheels i think the reason for that is the swing single sided swinging arm single sided swinging arm is actually quite heavy so i think even though you, you so you're in the end you're just one kilo lighter so if it probably had the twin side of swinging out, it'd probably be like five kilos lighter. But that adds a bit of weight, but it also makes it look really special. So I'm happy with that. So the first thing you do notice when you get on this bike, first of all, how fantastic it sounds, that Gran Turismo motor. 100, 170 horsepower, 170 horsepower in the Venture bike. If I was in the market for an adventure bike, the, the standard V4S, I'll say the standard, but the V4S is my favourite adventure bike. It's so nimble, I mean it's fast. I've got a review of the rally, which I'll put at the top, which I recorded a couple of months ago now. And it impressed me so much with the way that bike handles, the stability of it, the power, the brakes, you know, the whole package is incredible. This multi Strada platform is absolutely incredible. And, you know, this is actually the most expensive motorcycle Ducati have ever developed. I'm not talking about the Pike Speed, but this new V4 multi Strada platform is the most expensive motorcycle Ducati have ever made. Forget your Panigales and your sports bikes. This multi Strada costs the most in the development. You know, they wanted to get this bike absolutely perfect and now they've come so so close with this machine it is amazing i mean if i was to buy an adventure bike and i could afford it because it, yeah, the, the, the downside with this bike is it's incredibly expensive this is a 26 and a half thousand pounds motorcycle that's standard that's before you put any luggage on it or heated grips you know so by the time you've added the luggage you've added some heated grips I, I also added a nice fancy indoor Pikes Peak cover. I'm up to you up to about £28,000. So this is a £28,000 motorcycle once you've got your heated grips and some panniers on it. <laughs> it is a very, very expensive machine. But I tell you what, I tell you there is not a quicker, more comfortable motorcycle than this. If I had to go from Portsmouth to Scotland as fast as possible and in the maximum comfort, this would be my steed of choice. That is it. it. It may be expensive, but it is the most comfortable, fast motorcycle you can buy. The riding position on this feels more or less exactly like the standard V4S. You know, you're quite upright. There is actually some bar positions different on this. The pegs are in a slightly different location. The ge geometry is slightly tweaked as well, but I can't... <laughs> What's going on here? Thank you. I can't notice those differences. I think you'd have to literally ride it back to back to notice any differences. It feels exactly like the, the V4S from a riding position. I mean, at the moment, I am in the touring mode, so everything is nice and soft. So if I were to press the uh, the mode button, let's put it into race. Now, race is a, a dedicated uh, map for the, for the Multistrada. You don't normally get a race mode. <laughs> the standard multi starter and what the race mode does it gives you a more a more aggressive throttle response and it is definitely more aggressive it also gives you a more aggressive quick shifter blipper and i think that's it so we are now in the race mode and you do get a lot more urgency off the throttle the suspension is stiffened and i can now feel a bit more from the tarmac but not you know, it, it still wafts along a little bit. I think that's just due to the size of the suspension, maybe. And the fact that it's electronic, you do lose a little bit of that feel. You've also got the option to change the preload. And I've got this set to two people. I've got this set that I've got a pillion because I'm uh, a 20 stone fatty. I've got this set to pillion mode. So I've got lots of preload. The SMT, I feel, gives you more of a super moto experience. You know, I'm not getting that super moto experience with this bike. I'm getting a big, fast, comfortable motorcycle experience. And I think really, I mean, that, that comes down to the fact that it weighs 240 kilos. You know, you can't disguise 240 kilos. They've done a bloody good job of disguising 240 kilos, but you can't completely eradicate it. <laughs> that power. But you see, the wheelie control is off, 
but the bike is just so stable. You don't need the wheelie control on this machine. You don't need it because the front wheel just does not come up. It is locked to the road. Even if you want to clutch it up, it, does, it doesn't want to come up. It's absolutely locked to the road. And, you know, that, that's incredible. The dynamics of this bike, the, you know, the natural grip it's got, the natural agility it's got, and then you've got those incredible Ducati electronics on top of that package. It's just so easy, this bike. You know, it's so stable, it's so easy. You can go so fast on this and everything is just taken care of for you, you know. And, and that, you know, that again is another, <laughs> that's a brilliant, brilliant thing. But it's also a little bit of a criticism that it's just a bit too good, you know. And I've said this, you know, it's not the first time I've said this about some of the new Ducatis. And like I say, I can just go around here and I can push on and I can hold a full conversation with you because the bike is just sorting everything out. And, it, you know, it, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. But I, I just feel it lacks a little bit of engagement. It lacks a bit of rider engagement. And it's a bit of a shame. It's a bit of a shame. I was hoping the Pikes Peak might bring a little bit more rider engagement. Now, I, I don't want this video to come across that I'm slating this bike because I am absolutely not. It is an incredible bit of kit. And if I was going to be spending £23,000 on a on V4S, I'd definitely put the extra three grand in and get the Pikes Peak version because it does bring a bit extra. I mean, if I do it for the looks alone. I think it looks incredible, you know, with this colour scheme and the extra styling carbon and the, I'll definitely get the Pikes Peak version don't get me wrong but it's not it's not massive you know it's not massively better than the standard one and I think you know that's just that just shows how good the standard one is not that this bike is bad that just shows how good the standard V4S actually is Now, what is brilliant with this bike, I mean, the comfort is incredible. I mean, I've moaned a little bit in the past about the seat being not wide enough if you've got a big bum, and it is a little bit thin, the seat, but I've done three hours on, on the seat on this, and I found this more comfortable than the standard version. I don't know if this has a, a slightly more padded seat than the standard V4S, but I found the comfort better on this. Another thing which I found really, really impressive is the heat management. It's been 30 degrees I've been out on this bike and the way that the air is extracted out through these vents and drawn towards you from the lower vents, it makes it a really cool riding experience. You don't feel any heat on this bike. Even in traffic, it's not so bad. You know, it's, it's really impressive that the heat management. Let's have a little go so you can use a bit. The back, back brake feels really nice but you just don't have ultimate confidence to put it right on its side. You can, you can lay it down quite a bit, but you're missing just something to let you go that little bit further. And I think it probably is just the weight, just having that much weight on the side of the tyre. You know, you, I don't know, you, you, just, you just don't... I'm just not at the stage where I can absolutely lay it on its side in confidence. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's a 240 kilo bike. You would not go whizzing up there on anything else quicker, you know. But I think it's just that weight. When you've got that much weight on the side of the tyre... I'm getting too excited. I'm, my glasses are steaming up. This is an incredible machine. And I think if you're perhaps, you know, a bit of a less experienced rider, you can go so fast on this, you can have so much confidence on this. The electronics are incredible, everything will look after you. You know, it, it, it's amazing. But if you want a bit more engagement, if you want the front to be coming up over crests and, you know, to excite you, I, I think it, it, it could do with being a little bit more exciting. You know, it's not like the MT-10 or the Super Duke where, you know, the wheel's lifting and you're grinning under the helmet. You're grinning under the helmet because you can't believe how fast and you're going and how easy it is. But you're just lacking that little bit of engagement. I'm not slagging this machine. 
But because you can't test ride one of these, if you ride the standard V4S Multistrada and you absolutely love it, that you love the dynamics of it, you love everything about it, then this is another 15% on top. You know, but don't think, oh, the, the, the Pikes Peak is going to be miles different than the standard one because it's got 17 inch wheels on it. It's not. It is still quite similar. Only 15% better handling, 15% more dynamic. Yeah, the race mode gives you a much more direct throttle. So it picks up quicker, but it doesn't pick the front wheel up. You know, it, it, I think there's, at the end of the day, there's no disguising. 240 kilos you know that just takes a little bit of the excitement out of the bike but it's incredible if you want to traverse continents at maximum speed and in maximum comfort there is not a better motorcycle to do that on let's give it a little bit of stick ready Full throttle, wheelie controls off. As you saw, it did come up a little bit when you're absolutely pinning it. But it's, you know, it's so controlled. It just puts that power down. I mean, it's fast. It sounds amazing. Oh, you know, it, it nothing accelerates <laughs> quite like that. I mean, this is the same engine which is in the uh, the new Diavel. You know, that Gran Turismo engine. But I think it's a brilliant engine. And what's great about this is you've got the two-year servicing so if you don't do the uh, you know the 9,000 miles a year you don't have to have it serviced every year to keep your warranty up so you can roll that service over to the second year it's also got the 36,000 mile valve checks so 36,000 miles until you need to get into the engine to check the valves and all the Multistradas come with a a four-year warranty as well so you've got a four-year warranty on Multistradas so there's a lot of very, I don't think there's ever been a more sensible Ducati. The other electronics on this bike, like the radar cruise control, I mean, that, that just adds to the ease of use of this machine. You know, you, you go on the motorway, you set up the radar cruise control, and the bike almost rides itself. You know, it, it brakes for you, it accelerates for you. That radar cruise on here is absolutely incredible. I don't think there's a better system out there you know I'm, I'm really impressed with the radar cruise on this you've got the blind spot detection as well that all works really well and unlike other bikes it doesn't look really ugly because where they place the sensors on this you know the, the Tiger 1200 with its radar cruise the back end looks like a baboon's ass the brakes are also absolutely amazing on this this has the Panigale brake pads so it's obviously a more aggressive brake pad material than the, the standard Multistrada and the brakes feel like a sports bike they feel like a, a decent European they feel like the Street Fighter they feel very similar to the Street Fighter you, can, you can't really even feel that extra weight when you're on the brakes and the suspension doesn't dive too much you know, it, it's, uh, the brakes are absolutely amazing on this you know, that, that, and that gives you, again, that gives you that confidence to go faster because you've got that brake in <laughs> you get a stupid bird in the middle of the road you know you can do that braking and I think you can also brake and steer you can trail brake this bike as well because it doesn't it doesn't shift too much weight to the front when you go on the brakes so we can go in here I mean it drops a little bit but you can turn in while you're on the brakes come out on the power and I'm in quite a high I mean fifth I'm in fifth there, and that's how much grunt this bike's got. You know, so I mean, it's a, it can be quite lazy with this bike. Uh, yeah, it's uh, oh, my camera's gone a droopy on me. That was a bit risky putting that camera down there like that. That's my other Insta 360 dead. Another one bites the dust. So the Pikes Peak Multistrada. It's an incredible motorcycle and I don't want this review to sound like I've been slagging it off but because you can't test ride these machines you know I, I've got to tell you exactly what I think to this bike so you know what to expect you know because there's nothing worse than spending 26 and a half thousand pounds on a motorcycle you go and ride it away from the dealer and think ah this isn't quite what I thought it was going to be 
so you know th th that's how it is it's amazing if you like the v4s the standard one or the, the touring one of all the electronics it's got all that then you're gonna love this because this is another 15 20 percent more sporty than the standard v4s but if you rode the standard v4s and thought yeah it's all right but the pike's peak will probably be loads better it's not loads better so and that, and it's not the fact you know it's, it's the fact that just shows how good the standard v4s is it's not really it's not a criticism of this bike it just shows how good the standard v4s is and that's just the riding dynamics you know this looks twice as good as the standard v4s without question am i disappointed in this machine because this was a bike you know i was considering selling me h24 now it was it was on, on my dream list my dream motorcycles uh, i'm not disappointed it is incredible do i want one now i i don't want one because I don't do, I don't have to ride to Portsmouth to Scotland as fast as possible. You know, I don't need a long distance bike. I, I don't do long distance. You know, I don't commute to work. So I don't need a bike where I, I need to do massive distances on. And this is why I don't own an adventure bike. And, uh, you know, I really like the, uh, the KTM SMT. For me, that is more engaging. So I would probably go for the KTM SMT over the Pikes Peak. It's also half the price, which is a big bonus. I mean, it doesn't come with the technology that the Pikes Peak does. You know, this, I think, offers probably more weather, but this offers a lot more, obviously, but it's not, it's not as engaging as the SMT to ride. So, and, and I, you know, the sort of riding I do, I want maximum fun, maximum engagement, and I can sacrifice a bit of comfort, because I think this is more comfortable than the SMT. But I want that additional excitement, that additional engagement. So for me, I'll, I'll go the SMT. But that's not taking anything away from what a fantastic machine this is. So uh, there we go. That's my final thoughts on the Pikes Peak Multistrada. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.